Hello, and welcome to the River Horse weekly news update that this video is. Um, I see we have five eager, eager viewers. Um, if any of you have any questions, just post them in the comments on Facebook, and I should be able to read them and then struggle to give you an answer. I'm alone in the office today, which will make things seem a little uh, hectic, because I'm actually running the stream and doing the update from the newsletter at the same time. Um, with that said, might as well dive straight into the newsletter. Um, the main focus of the newsletter, the headline, if you will, um, this week, is that we just got a prototype in for the Labyrinth, the card game. Um, and it's awesome to look at, so we thought we would make you all look at it too, because um, we've spent pretty much most of the week poring over it, because um, what happens when we get a prototype like this is that we have to go over the entire thing and basically make sure that there are no printing errors and that you guys are getting the best possible product. I can't actually leave it alone. Um, cool. So I will, I will be doing an under the camera unboxing of that um, at the end of the stream after I've gone through the, the newsletter. So uh, the next feature in the newsletter are spinaches of Kira and, uh, I think it's Kira and Jen from the Dark Crystal. Um, who are the two Gelflings from the Dark Crystal board game, this one. And they um, are a great pair of miniatures. Um, I think they, they make a huge, <laughs> a huge impact when they're, when they're painted as well. And the game's only got like, you know, four quality miniatures in it. So it's, it's one of those board games that's very easy to paint up. Um, uh, oh, yeah, those were painted by Morgan Finley. Um, who has done a lot of painting for us. She painted the um, our display Highlander miniatures, which you may have seen during our Highlander um, campaign. Um, so next up, um, which is, I think, my favourite, beco quickly becoming my favourite part of the, uh, of the stream, is the creature feature. So this is a competition entry by um, Daniel Del Lewis III of the... Uh, <laughs> I assume the Del Lewis bloodline, um, and he has drawn us a. That's the one. He's drawn us a hop rocker. Um, as you can see, a hop rocker is a fun-loving, aquatic, flightless bird that enjoys collecting shiny pebbles. When the moon is full, large groups will congregate on beaches, trading shiny rocks and gems in hopes of gaining as many of their favorite color as they can find. Now, I think this is not only adorable, but also I, I like a monster that can be haggled with, you know? And monsters are a harsh term. Creature. <laughs> I like a creature that can be haggled with. Sort of, I can imagine that the party would have a, a red key, for example, but the, the red hot rocker is obsessed with it and won't give it away. So you have to find something better and redder to trade with him. I think it can be used in a whole bunch of puzzles, and I'd like to say thank you to Daniel for entering it. It's very cool, and we are uh, still accepting um, pictures, and you don't have to be a master artist to enter. We, um, we will redraw the selected, um, the selected pictures uh, before we put them online, so they will look exactly like they belong in the Tales of Equestria universe. The other thing is that if you are a super artist, we won't redraw them. <laughs> we'll just post them out looking great. So there you go. Um, oh, and for if your monster is selected, again, monster, if your lovely creature is selected, we will send you a starter set for Tales of Equestria, which I can't point to because our Kallax shelving has become so full now of different products that there's just no room. Um, so the next thing that we have been doing is we're doing a countdown of the digital assets that were used in the Labyrinth card game. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on that because I'm about to bust open this box and ruin all of the digital asset reveals that we have planned uh, for the future. Um, so, um, next up is the comic. So, as anyone following our newsletter will know, we are doing a weekly comic. 
at the moment, um, which is usually about whatever's going on sort of in the office. Um, uh, today's comic is about prototyping. And I'm going to have to just not look at the screen for a moment because what I've done here is create a picture that haunts me. Um, you know how if you stare into a light for too long, every time you close your eyes, you can see the filament burnt onto your retinas? I've, um, I've been disturbed, is, uh, is what's happening here. So, hopefully you all survived that encounter with human-eyed George. Um, the next part of this itinerary is called Your Games, no, Our Games, Your Content. <laughs> um, and Our Games, Your Content is about showcasing content that other people have made about our games. Simple. So you make a piece of content, whether you're making the piece of content anyway, just send it our way. We'll give you a bit of free publicity. Um, today's video is an unboxing by on tabletop with Ryan and Jerry um, from On Tabletop. So if you want to watch an enormous man get very confused by uh, <laughs> by IP and continuity, then pop on over to On Tabletop because uh, <laughs> it's a very funny video. And then finally, as we do every week, we have our pre-orders section, which uh, is getting shorter and shorter as more things arrive on the beaches. Uh, first up, we have the Hunger Games, which will be dropping any any minute now. Um, we have the Ogres and Oubliettes standee set for Tales of Equestria. That's a set of little um, sort of cardboard cutouts and plastic bases that you can use so that you can do kind of um, tactical stuff in your Tales of Equestria games and run um, kind of more physical on the tabletop adventures. Um, we have the Labyrinth Adventure Book, which I'm sure you have you are beginning to tire of us going on about, but it's my pet project and I've I love it, so go and pre-order that immediately. Um, we have the Labyrinth Card Game, which I'm sure you will be pre-ordering just as soon as you've seen what's inside this box. And we have Pacific Rim, wave one of which is close. <laughs> Like I said, I'm on my own in the office. Usually what would happen when we have to pull a number like that out of our head is we would just look over to there where I'm sat and I'd hold it up on a notepad. But I'm not there today. I'm here. So I don't know the numbers for that particular thing. But close. And I mean like really close. Um, so I'm going to move on to unboxing this prototype, which I did... A good job of rattling around earlier. So uh, let's hit the close cam. Okay, what have we got? This is the cover. Ooh, where are we at? <laughs> so, um, as you can see, this is cool. We are um, Ralph Horsley has drawn all of the, the main five characters from, well, he's, he's drawn all of the cards, but here on the cover we have the five main characters from the movie. We've got Jareth, Sarah, Hoggle, Ludo, Sir Didymus, and Ambrosius. So I guess technically it's six characters. Um, wouldn't want to leave out Ambrosius. And it's, it's a cool little magnetic box, because one of the things that we thought about this when we were kind of doing the project, the, the product design, was that it should... It should come in a. It, it should be not only should the contents be a special thing that you're you're proud to own, but you know how you always put special things you're proud to own in a special box. We kind of wanted the box to fill its own uh, kind of part of the product. You know, it can live on a bookshelf and you know, like so, or it can live underneath your David Bowie shrine in your wardrobe, whatever. So. Um, that is the exterior, but now we move on to the interior. Um, on the interior, we have the rules. This is a simple game, but like the best simple games, the actual tactics of it is 
you, you could spend a lifetime learning to play this game. And in fact, it's based on a um, a old French game um, that has been around for years. It's a trick-taking card game where you play in rounds and you 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 try and take the the, the trick, as it were. Um, and yeah, it is a super cool game. We've been playing it in the office at lunchtime. So yeah. We also have rules, so because it's a, a very traditional game, it's, um, it's four players played in teams of two, a little bit like bridge, um, in the sense that that's played in teams of two. Um, but we do have variant rules for um, odd numbers of players or uh, two players, and they are available on our website at riverhorsegames.com. So, as you can see, because I've just left this camera hovering here, we have... Does that work? No. Okay. So the backs of every card has this amazing labyrinth pattern. Um, and I have actually worked out that there is a way through this labyrinth, so when you get your copy you can... Uh, pull out the biros and uh, start working it out. You've got, I think you've got about, how many cards are there? Whew, 80 cards. Oh no, 80 and 24. Ah, nope, 80. There are 80 cards in this box, which means if you did want to solve the map, you get 80 tries. So, these cards are, obviously they are oversized or tarot sized if you're looking for to to sleeve them um, and they are gorgeous they're just really fun to handle that is the the backs which has all these amazing tiny details in that you won't be able to see on our camera so it's got the escher staircase in the center and then goblin town around that and then it's got the the outer area where the the junk ladies live kind of around the goblin town it's got this underground section here with the with the stone heads. It's got the bog of eternal stench. It's got the the lands of yore. It's got the hedge maze, and obviously around the outside, it has the the stone walled section of the labyrinth. It's just a really cool design that I've uh, I've been obsessing over, mainly because I want to solve the, uh, the 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 map. So here on the inside of the box, we have a contents list, which I'm going to read for you as I go through the cards. Um, we have four suits, we've got the books, little red book, I'm sure you recognise it, we have the clocks, and we have let's find some, the orbs, after Jareth, Jareth's crystal orbs, and Oh, they're all at the back. There we go. Oh, dropping stuff everywhere. Luckily I'm off camera. Haha. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we have these guys. The owls. So, there are aces, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, nines, tens, jacks, cavaliers, queens and kings. So, I'm sure you're wondering, what is a cavalier? <laughs> I definitely did the first time I heard it. Well, obviously this gentleman here is a cavalier, we all know that, um, with his noble steed. And there you go. So a, a cavalier is a picture card that has a value between a jack and a queen. Um, and here you can see Sir Didymus in all of his glory, riding on Ambrosius bravely, I assume. Um, What else? What else is on the on the list? So, yeah. So the majority there are um, fifty six of these minor suit cards, and then we have the the labyrinth uh, cards, <laughs> which are your equivalent to your major arcana. So, for example, here thematically, they're the forces of the labyrinth working against. The players they are the altering shape of the dreamscape um, uh, we have the the goblin king's castle himself we have 
Fireys, we have Brave Lancelot, we have uh, Alf and Ralph and Jim and Tim, the door guards who love riddles. They do the whole riddle with the truth and dare thing where you... Not truth and dare. Truth and lies. <laughs> where they're like, um, do you... If one of us tells lies and one of us tells the truth, then and one door is certain death and the other is ice cream, then you ask us a question and the liar has the ice cream door and the... the anyway... It's a whole it's a whole thing, and I can never remember the riddle, and I can also never remember the answer, which is much more frustrating. Uh, we have Humongous, the giant robot that's formed when the doors of Goblin City close. We have the Helping Hands making cool faces. We've got the the Wise Man. We've got the those amazing door knockers with the the kind of speak no evil, hear no evil motif. We've got the cleaners. I mean, you name it. If it's in the movie, it's here. We've got the false alarms got the ball. Uh, we've even got the uh, stepmother, who, uh, as we all know, all, all great fantasy novels start with, with a stepmother. We have the, the junk lady, and then a personal favourite, Allo. And, I mean, they just go on. I, I, I should probably hold some back, um, rather than just... <laughs> piling them all under the camera but um yeah ralph's done an absolutely stellar job they are super cool and they're great to hold i mean i'm planning on um using my set in the um in the the labyrinth rpg um i think we were talking the other day actually about doing like a a pdf one one time uh, adventure that featured the cards so you kind of you come across someone who's doing a tarot reading um, whilst on the on the adventure through the labyrinth and somehow the cards you draw change that kind of deck of many things situation um, whether or not that will ever happen I don't know I think it's more likely to happen now that I've said it out loud to the public rather than uh, keeping it a secret which is probably what I'm supposed to do when left alone to do a live stream in the office I'm just going to momentarily check the messages, make sure any of you, make sure none of you have asked me any questions, basically. Um, I don't seem to be seeing any questions there, but then I could be doing this wrong. So yeah, um, this is the Labyrinth of the Card Game, uh, drawn by Ralph Horsley and um, laid out by Pete Borlace and myself, and... Uh, the game was adapted by Alessio Cavatore. Onto literally two sides. So easy to learn. It's one of those games where you. It's not even. The, by halfway through your first game, you've picked it up to a point where you've become really competitive and you're like, wait, this is, a, this is my learning game. You know when you, you say to yourself, I don't mind if I win or lose the first game, it's all about learning, and then I'll get them on the second game. But this one really like gets its teeth so early in the game that you're not actually that far behind and you are able to just start just start you know working with that synchronicity with you and your team member and and really really going forwards um well facebook has crashed completely so i can't tell if anyone has sent me any questions which is lucky because i would probably struggle to answer them anyway um oh there you go lots of people have liked the stream thanks <laughs> Um, yeah, so, I'm just going to see if that loads up, just in case there are any questions. And then we will probably round up the stream there. Um, like I said, it's just me in the office today, so it's a short one. Okay. Oh, here we go. Card game, woot woot, Simon Campbell. Hello, Simon. Hello, water equines. Oh, look, Alessio's in the chat. There you go. <laughs> There's lots of comments, and I hope he's uh, handling them all and responding to them. Um, there we go. Will there be a sequel to the Dark Crystal board game when the new series is on the way, like the expansion? Anything board or card related for Age of Resistance? So... Um, yeah, like I said, I have been warned against telling people... Uh, state secrets effectively um, and things that we're working on but i will say that you know this is this is not a new new idea to us 
um, we've had several kind of big, big old talks where we discuss what we want to do, what's practical to do, um, and those aren't always the same thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically we will see. Um, we will see when Age of Resistance comes out, which we're super excited for, and we'll see, you know, if if there is anything that we can do in that in that sort of narrative space. Um, if you ever have use for voice actors, will you have a casting or something? My, um, we do very occasionally have a use for voice actors when we do Kickstarters. We get somebody to do the, uh, the, the voiceovers for that. Um, obviously I'm not dubbed at the moment. I should probably be, that would be much easier. I could just sit here moving my mouth and then somebody who knows what they're talking about could do the rest. Um, but yeah, we, we very occasionally do need have a need for voice actors, but it's not something we do a lot. Uh, that PDF one-shot adventure sounds amazing. Oh, well, thank you. I'm going to go for Seely rather than... In hindsight, I think it's probably Kelly. Um, Thanks. The PDF one-shot idea, um, yeah, I think one of the things we talked about was maybe doing a kind of uh, a creature feature thing and getting people, you know, like we do with Tales of Equestria and getting people to submit um, kind of content for, you know, their games. Like if you're playing a game of uh, the Labyrinth RPG and you've homeschooled a load of stuff, maybe you felt like, um, what's, a, what's a classic in... Um, like carry capacity is a classic in RPGs. People are always homeschooling new way and more realistic ways of doing carry capacity, but nobody uses them anyway. Anyway, if you've homeschooled a bunch of stuff or you have any content that you've made um, for the game, we might consider laying it out, turning it into a kind of uh, a, a free piece of content for everyone. Alessio has asked, um, how much does the card game cost? And... I know off by heart that it isn't written on the back of the box. Um, so, no, I have not got the price of the card game written down on this piece of paper. I'm going to take a stab. No, I won't. <laughs> Just in case I'm wrong. Um, but I'm sure Alessio will post how much the card game costs in the chat. And then I can read it out. Although I think it's about five seconds behind me. So... That may not happen. Um, so I'm just going to go for a quick, while I wait to see if he's going to post under there how much the pre-order is. Just a quick go through. Oh, there are these aces as well, which, um, let's, sorry, make sure I can see what I'm doing here. So there are these aces as well, which um, unlike the the tarot style of artwork on the, on the rest of the cards, um, much like an ace in a deck of cards, there are kind of more a more detailed version of the the, the number cards. Oop, make sure that's under. It's very disorientating this. There you go. Which I just think are really cool. Really cool little motifs and stuff. Got Sarah eating a peach. More books. So many books. Got another Sarah there. Sarah's are the uh, the queens of the deck. And obviously Jareth's are the kings of the deck. So, but each one is individually drawn. So we've got Sarah at the ball. We've got Sarah eating the peach. We've got um, Sarah from the start of the movie where her and Jareth are meeting outside. He's challenging her to see if she can make it through the labyrinth in 13 hours. Um, yeah, and then there's a fourth Sarah in here somewhere, but whew, I've done a real good job of shuffling these now. So I don't know where it is. Twenty dollars. The card game costs twenty dollars um, on our website and can be pre-ordered. And I think we approved this. So basically, what happens is we go through this and look, we go through a prototype and look for any um, any errors, and then we send any errors that we find back to the manufacturer, which we've already done. And then they make like a billion of them and put them on a boat, and then you guys get them. So that's the stage this product is currently at. And I think that's it for my live stream. Um, the next thing on my itinerary is to say thank you and goodbye. So I'm going to do that. 
Um, thank you and goodbye. We do this every week. If you send your, if you have any questions that you want us to answer in the in the sh the live stream, um, you can send them to community at riverhorse.eu, um, or you can post them to our Facebook page. Just harass us on social media in any way you feel um, is appropriate, and we will make a note of it and try and bring it up in the live stream. That way, if you're not present live to ask questions in the chat, then we can. You know, we can answer your question, then you can watch it back later. Um, but yeah, we do this every Friday. Um, if you can't catch it live, it's available on our Facebook. And we really enjoy just sort of rambling loosely at you. I'm really bad at sign-off, so I'm just going to say thank you and goodbye, like it says to on my piece of paper. Thank you and goodbye.